Did you ever wonder how they make picture books like this? Or how they get the pictures in the books? Or who decides on the picture? Or how they even print the books? Or how do they get all those different colors in the pages? Well, on this exciting episode of Kids Investigate, you'll discover how picture books are made. We'll be interviewing an author and publisher, Carl Summer. We'll visit him in his home and business. We'll even visit a printing plant. Let's go. How many books have you written, Mr. Summer? I've written 20 children's picture books. Cool. That's a lot of books. And I've noticed that they all won awards. Where do you get your ideas from? I get my ideas from because my, my goal is, you see, I have an objective. And my goal is to help kids. What can I write or how can I create a story that's very interesting and also teach the children some valuable lessons? Can you give us an example? Yes, one of the important lessons in life is to follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Have you written any books about that? Yes, I have. And the book I've written was Tied Up in Knots. And it's rather interesting I, where I got the story from this. All right, this is about two mules that wouldn't share with one another their food. And I have a filing system I have 145 books like this in my filing system. 145? I've been collecting information for many, many, many years. All right? And I also have four file cabinets with four drawers each, and they're filled with all kinds of articles. I stopped putting them in, in binders anymore. And so four times four is how much? 16. 16, and two of them are sort of empty yet I have, and I just fill with all kinds of articles. Let me give you this example I have over here. I have the paper clip so I know where it is. And I want you to look oh. at this little illustration, all right? And notice it has no words. Why doesn't it have any words? That's, all, that's the only idea I got. And I'll let them see it on the screen also here so they can get a good picture of it. And it's just a picture of some mules, and from just this, and this, if you notice the date. You wrote it. Was when? It was in 75. 1975. So that's many, many, many years ago. That's that I long. That I found this illustration, I filed it, and lo and behold, hey, I remember, I got an illustration. And I was trying to make up a story where sharing brings happiness. And Benny and Sally, they wouldn't share. They always fought. No, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. You know, they always, they're always unhappy, they're always fighting, always fussing, like a lot of kids do with, with brothers and sisters. And so they finally discovered that sharing brings happiness. So Mr. Summer, what's another important lesson that you teach in your stories? One of the big problems that a lot of children, and adults too, they're ashamed of who they are. They're ashamed of the way they look, the color of their skin, their family, their background, that their parents speak a foreign language, and you shouldn't be ashamed of who you are. That's the way you are. And so it's very important to have a healthy self-esteem. This is the way I am. Now, you don't stick your nose up in the air and say, I'm better than anybody else, but you shouldn't walk around down, little boy, don't look at me. You see some people at camera shot. Oh, don't take a picture, but that's who you are. Don't, never be ashamed of who you are. What storybook did you write to show this? The storybook that I wrote is If Only I Were. It's about Missy the Mouse, and she didn't like a long, skinny tail and a big, ugly ears. She wanted to look like Horace the Cat. And her parents told her, said, listen, cats have problems too, but what problems could cats have, she said. You know, and she became very unhappy and she got her wish, becoming all different kinds of things, but finally she discovered dream. to be happy for who she was. She was happy that she was a mouse, even with her big ears and skinny tail. So be thankful what you are. Yes. If you learn to do that, you'd be very wise. Oh, so it doesn't matter how small or how big you are, it just matters who you are. Right. You can't change. 
you can think all you want. You're not going to grow any taller or you're not going to get any shorter. It's, it's an important lesson to be just happy who you are. This is the way the good Lord made me, and I'm going to accept that. And that's what we're trying to teach. Because so many people walk around their life so unhappy and disgruntled. Oh, I wish I was this and that and that. And here I am. And you notice I don't have much hair in my head? Huh? What am I going to do? I'm going to be, this is who I am. I'm bald-headed. I'm not going to be ashamed of it. This is who I am. So what's one of the most important lessons for children to learn to become successful? And that's to learn to listen to your parents. I have a book here called Proud Rooster and Little Hen. And the only one Proud Rooster listened to was himself because he was proud. He didn't listen to his dad or mom. But isn't proud being good? There's a good pride and there's a bad pride. You don't listen to anyone. You don't take any advice from anyone. You just do whatever you think is the right thing to do. You don't listen to your parents. You don't listen to your teachers. You just do what you think is right. And so that's the wrong kind of pride to have. And that's a proud rooster head. And so this is so important. If I can tell you kids, an important thing is learn to listen to your parents and learn to listen to your teachers. Because it's important if you want to become successful because you'll, you'll avoid many problems in life if you just learn to listen. Because remember, there's no one that loves you more than your parents. Well, some people don't like to listen. Yeah, that's a proud rooster. He didn't. And he got in all kinds of trouble because he didn't listen. He nearly lost his life. But he finally learned to listen. And I hope a lot of children who read these books will also learn that important lesson in life. Oh, I get it. So the next time our parents tell us something, we should listen to them. Yes, even though you don't understand it. You say, I'm going to listen to them because I'm going to trust them.